Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Digital Experience Teams um, Sprint or Iteration Release video going over what we've done over the last two weeks. Today is June 2nd. Uh, and I believe up first is Lauren Barker. Okay. So first thing we did was we implemented uh, a new authorization for Netlify CMS. We did client-side implicit grant to PKCE and it went really smooth and that was exciting. The second thing is um, we added inline SVG extension for middleman. And this is a, a little middleman extension that lets you um, easily call in SVGs without pasting the code into your template. And it's gonna be really allow us to use SVGs more efficiently through out the repo. Um, this MR, I changed a bunch of the, the icons, but go check out the MR and then look for more use of that. Um, I did a quick patch to update the header tags on our comparison pages to use H1 and H2 tags instead of nothing. So that GitLab versus uh, GitHub at the very top. Before that was, uh, I think, just a span, but now it's an H1, which is going to really help with SEO. Um, and that was just a, a nice little quick patch. Um, did lazy loading off screen images for our blog category pages. Uh, just a quick native lazy load. So if you scroll down, um, it will load the, the image as the page loads. Um, but these are short, so you won't really notice it, but it's there. Makes it load a little faster. And uh, started step five. Uh, oh, no, four. Um, we've got a, uh, there's a little content thing on the install CE or EE page where there used to be a, a list under that why use enterprise edition. Um, now we have bullet points instead of, um, it was just mixed in with the content. So it didn't kind of mixed up users. So I just uh, quickly added the bullet points there. Um, and started step five for the event template. So that's connecting it to Netlify CMS. I'm about 60% there. And Tyler finished step four. So putting all our components together and making it available, which is very, very exciting. And Nathan is up next. I don't believe he's here. I can chat about what he was working on. Um, yeah, he added um, a banner to the homepage. Uh, so at the very top, you'll see remote by GitLab June 29th uh, is running for the whole month. Um, so that's uh, a nice addition. Um, he also added himself to a team page, org, org chart, and our uh, digital experience handbook. Um, Sid asked for some updates to the pricing page. Uh, so I believe Nathan was working on this with Jess and made some quick updates to uh, maybe the control group, maybe the test, the AB test group, I'm not quite sure. Um, and then uh, there was someone pointed out that there was broken markup on the continuous delivery uh, page. Um, so this page previously where all the links are, we're showing like the Hamel, like percent side, a whatever gobbledygook. So he's fixed all of those links. Um, so that page looks a lot better now. Uh, and working on fixing the install page, uh, there's a bit of a jumpy scroll happening and that JavaScript that handles that was written like four years ago. Nathan loves that kind of stuff. So he was excited to, to hop on that and that should be done from, uh, soon. And then Tina is next. Thanks. I love that word gobbledygook. Sorry, just couldn't stop thinking about it while you're talking. Um, so my priority for this iteration cycle was to create a template for the solutions page CMS. Um, I selected um, a collection of blocks that mostly already exist anyways, um, that can be used to assemble various uh, solution page layouts. I also created a mother template, which holds all the blocks. So like the other CMS templates we created, if a block isn't needed, it won't display. Um, and lastly, I created three pressure tests to see how the mother template can be used to create existing pages, um, one of which is the updated uh, pub sec page, public sector page, which is um, one of our OKR epics. Um, so that's it for uh, the solutions stuff. Um, I also narrowed down a, link, a list of links for the product footer. So that's um, some work that is going to be rolling into next iteration. So um, for this 
version, we're going to link to home, resources, blog, docs, contribute, uh, support, and the pricing page. And lastly, uh, the last item, not much to show there, but Tyler and I uh, went heavy with some planning uh, last week on the Compare Page project, which is kicking off next iteration. Some work has already started this iteration uh, behind the scenes. Um, we gathered some info and started breaking out the Epic into smaller issues. Uh, that's it. Next is Jess. And the first thing there is this, uh, what we're calling iteration two of the pricing page. It was a request from Sid. Um, I'd say mostly copy changes in an attempt to um, create a more of a visual hierarchy as well. Uh, and then Laura had mentioned Nathan worked on some things. We kind of so post what you see here. There were additional changes um, to the test um, and those got implemented and are running right now. Um, and then the next thing is, oh yeah, the re reusable banner component for um, to direct people to the free trial page something that we're going to plan to put on many pages um, and hopefully, you know, just a little blurb to let people know that it exists and we'll send them away to the page if they're interested in it. And then the next thing is, <laughs> oh yeah, the research. So I had been working on some usability research um, for the SAS free trial signup flow. Um, uh, this is like kind of done. We paused it to move on to some other things, but we were able to get four uh, tests out, got some really great feedback. I got all my observations on the ticket there. I've um, been working with Sam on that and he's gonna like take it away from there um, and just you know clean up the form as best as possible. Um, and then the last thing is the contact sales update. Um, and this is, I would say it's not a huge UX update, it's definitely a UI update. Um, so it's not too dissimilar from our current page. Um, some copy changes for sure, but generally just kind of like simplifying that page and uh, making it a little bit better. That's it. Who's up next? Bobby. Oh, that's me. Hello. Um, turned on Slippers CSS within the head, which means that Slippers CSS is accessible at any page within www, um, which I think will help us uh, get stuff out. Um, there was some changes with uh, like whatnot over the weekend that Laura and Nathan like were able to pick up about like certain different, I don't even know what was happening, like different packages for slippers being used in different nodes in different areas. So thank you for figuring that out. Um, I did a, uh, some work with the component generator that we were using within slippers. Um, I found like some gaping bugs with it. So I went ahead and fixed that. And I just to remind people how to use it, just I've put it here um, just to be like very explicit. Um, I made this like big quality of life change for making commits to slippers. Um, previously, left hook would run a pre commit hook that would run prettier on all files on slippers. Um, that takes forever. Now it's only running on stage files, meaning that like if you only change three files, um, it'll only check. The prettier config will only check those three files for uh, changed like style whatnot instead of checking the entire directory, which will help uh, keep the the process of waiting for like you know if if you've worked with slippers you you'll know it'll hang for like three or four seconds so now it should be like almost instantaneous. Um, removed uh, deprecated navigation partials and I cleaned up relevant code. Um, this is I think like almost done or should be done. I had, there was like some random issue with it, but essentially we're gonna go through and just clean up all like uh, like navigation related stuff and trying to get all of this all synchronized so that when we do switch the navs, it's all like gonna all change. When I tried doing the exploration of it, there's like a lot of the, it changes in some pages and not others. And so this was like kind of like a way of trying to rectify some of that and make, make it so that like when the header partial in www does get updated it'll affect the entire site not just like some pages and yeah so much better with that i believe that's it for me uh next up is laura uh yeah so uh i had done a quick change to the slippers radio and checkboxes um just had come up with some new designs where the the stroke of the line is a little bit thinner um, the disabled styles keep some colors in them and stuff. So I made those updates just so that we could release a new version of slippers and fix that bug that Javi had alluded to earlier. Um, so they're very minimal change, but they're there. 
Um, I also did a few homepage requests, added a new uh, video to the video banner. Um, I updated the install page uh, to have colored logos um, so that they're like more visually different. You can pick out exactly what you're looking for. Um, so that was maybe last week. Uh, and then the uh, biggest thing I've been working on is the free trial page update. Um, we have a new design uh, for the entire page. So working on that and it's not ready yet, uh, but uh, it's coming. And then next is Steven. Yeah, mine are pretty boring. Just a lot of issues that I've created from the parent Epic and tried to fill out some of them. So fill out the main one, which is features, which is top of myself and Brandon's priority. So trying to get a head start on that for when he returns from vacation so that we can begin to divide and conquer and set what we want for uh, NBC. Um, so yeah, that's me. Pretty, pretty basic and pretty straightforward. Very boring. Sweet. Uh, all right, I think that's everyone and we'll see you next time.